welcome to another Coding with Marcia. Today we will discuss in more detail what is an array and how can we in put inside of the array elements that make sense. Specifically, today we will use the, and the NumPy array function and we will use the NumPy package. So these are the two uh, tools of uh, trades that we will use. So, an array is just a collection of items that has a fixed size, so you can only put a certain number of elements inside an array, defined by you, the, the size. Um, of course, you can resize the array whenever you want, but when you create it, for example, you set the size of the array. And the elements that we, you put within the array have a particularity they have to be always of the same type. So, if you put a string first, the second element should also be a string, and so on. Another thing is um, that arrays are named collections. What does that mean? It means that you pass, uh, you create an array with elements inside of it, and then you give a name to it, a variable that holds the location in memory to that array and using that name which can be any kind of name that you want to give to the array as long as it doesn't conflict with others um, you can use that name to index the array to get elements from the array and to um, make operations with the array naming the array that's why we say that the array is a named collection so summing it up an array is a container, it has a fixed number of elements inside and um, all the elements are of the same type. Now let us begin with the one-dimensional arrays. The one-dimensional arrays, also called vectors, are uh, arrays that have only one dimension. So they're a collection of elements uh, stored in an organized way. When you want to create an array, you should first import the NumPy package and then you should use something like NPy array. And the way that we create arrays manually is by passing uh, as argument a list. A list is uh, defined with two brackets, square brackets, and inside we put the elements separated by commas. One, two, three. And then you can give a name to the array, such as array one. Okay, this is a way in which you can create an array. Uh, arrays are used for many things, but usually uh, you can bottle it down to uh, storing information that is relevant to you. So imagine, for example, that you have this information. So you have countries and you have the latitude and the longitude and you have this stored in a file and you want to pick the first four me measurements of latitude and put them in an array. Okay, now that we have here the numbers, we can call array2 and we can say NP array. I'm going to pass a list that has the first latitude, second, and so on. Maybe for clarity, we can call it array of latitude. And then, of course, we can uh, create an array, another array that has the countries that are related to the array of latitudes. And then we call NP array. And now I'm gonna fetch the number, the, the countries, the country's names. I'm gonna copy. So now we have here uh, the, the countries that are associated to the latitudes so that we have uh, two arrays that are correlated. 
So, in this sense, we can use arrays to store important measures of experiments that you did or information that you want to store for later use. I will give more examples. So, you have here several examples in which the first is the number of repairs that different equipment went on in the year of 2020. So, the equipment A had one repair happening in 2020, the um, equipment B had one uh, repair in 2020, and for example, the E equipment had zero repairs, so it was always uh, in a healthy state. Um, this was information that I gathered from my observations, of course it's fictitious, but it, it might not be. Uh, the important is to showcase how you can use an array to store Important information. You always have. You also have the time that we spend doing repairs on the different equipment. This is also fictitious data. And then you have the time spent in each repair for just the equipment T. So equipment T had three um, repairs, and we. I produced these numbers to show that in each repair, in each of the three repairs, which, how much time it was spent doing the repair. So you also have uh, information that are just useful, such as the names of the people in charge of the maintenance. And you have, for instance, IDs of zones that had, uh, um, that had repair uh, work done on them in an airplane in 2020. Of course, this is again fictional, but it gives you an idea of what you can put inside an array. In this case, a one-dimensional array. And then you have, for instance, the IDs of the equipment that were put into operation that, are, that were new in 2020. An important thing to notice is that when you have an array, it's organized. Uh, so you can access the first position and the element that's in the first position is always the same unless you do something to it. So the order uh, can matter or not depending on what you want. So if you want, for instance, to store the names of the people in the maintenance team, the order doesn't have much meaning, right? Because you can put the first name um, uh, Tina as the first name, but you could put Tina as the last name and imagining that all they have the same uh, responsibility, uh, it doesn't really matter uh, the order that you put them inside the array. But there are other cases that the order mer mer matter. So for instance, if you take the temperatures of an equipment over time, the first element will be the, um, the earliest. and the latest element, the last element, would be the last measure that you did. So the order in this case matters, but it doesn't depend on the array itself. It depends on how you use the array. A good thing to know is that we can, uh, because the elements stay in the same order that we put them inside, we can index the arrays uh, in this following way. So I'm going to say that the index is zero, and then I'm going to call array 1 and I'm going to pass the index. And this will be my element. And then I can print my element and check what's inside. Okay, so the first element, the one that is in index 0, is uh, number one. Okay, this is important to know that the, it's not always the case in MATLAB. It's different, but in Python, the first position of the array is uh, where the index is zero. So it starts at zero, and then goes to one, to two, and so on. So if I change the index to one, and I run, I get the element. That's it, that is in the second position, which is two. Okay? A cool thing to know is that sometimes you want to access the last element of the list, 
and then of the array sorry and then you can put minus one because uh, in the end you use negative numbers to transverse the array in reverse order so if i run i get element three which is the last element but if i put minus two if i increase the number of uh, um, in this case decrease because it's a negative number but the absolute number increases i go to the second last element and this should give me two correct so remember the index is the number that you use to get an element from the array it starts at zero then goes to one until the len minus one of the array if you want to uh, get the elements in reverse order so you want to get for instance the last element you should start in minus one if it's the second last element you go to minus two and so on so sometimes you want to create arrays that are more complex than one and one dimensional arrays the vectors uh, and then you call them matrices uh, matrices are simply arrays that have more than one dimension and imagine that you want to store the array of the geographical positions of certain countries of course you have the latitude but you also need the latitude so you put for instance these numbers which are the latitudes and you put them into a, a new element so here i have a list a list of lists that have as elements the longitude but now I want to fetch these numbers here, the latitudes, and add them. So, so that each, each uh, latitude is connected to a longitude, which are the latitude and the longitude of the countries that you see here. And then I pick this one. Okay, now I can print, I can calculate the shape of the position of the array of positions, which is obtained by the shape function. And then you pass the array of positions of countries, which is this one, and you print the shape of the array of positions so that we can see how many dimensions we have and which ones are the dimensions. So, okay, so we have four rows, so because we have four elements, four countries and we have for each country it's represented by two columns meaning it's represented by the latitude and by the longitude so this is a matrix and it has uh, information that is more complex than a simple vector but it's still useful information okay so i think it's all for today <laughs> thank you for watching and see you next lesson